I recently came across this Waterman's 52 while I was flea market shopping uh, just the other day. And um, it was in a bin labeled uh, $2, $2 per pen. And uh, well, I saw it and instantly knew what it was and uh, picked it up. As you can see, it's uh, it's in, I'd say, fair condition. It's definitely had um, not the easiest of life, but uh, there was nothing broken on the pen that I saw. Uh, it's just got a little bit of discoloration to it and a little bit of oxidation to the uh, the trim. So like the clip that you see here has got a lot of um, stuff on it. Um, the nib looks horrible uh, initially. It looks really terrible, but uh, all that is is dried on ink. That's still the original Waterman's number two uh, ideal number two nib. Uh, you also notice that there's a little bit of plier markings on there. Looks like someone tried to grab the section and unscrew it. Surprisingly enough, the uh, the chasing is pretty, or the, at least the uh, the engraving is pretty sharp and crisp. That was something that really surprised me about this pen when I first got it. Was you could still actually clearly read um, all of the uh, the Waterman's uh, stuff on there. Now, this is where I'm dumping out the the crystallized ink sac. This is completely normal uh, when you're doing a pen. Uh, this is very normal to have happen. I mean, the, the ink sac will usually dry up and it'll just turn into, uh, it'll just harden up. It'll just crystallize essentially. And uh, yeah, it just all falls out and it's all into loose bits and pieces. So that's completely normal. And uh, a lot of it, this is also a normal thing to have happen on these pens, is uh, the dried on ink sac will also crystallize onto the nipple of the section. So um, I just get a couple of dental picks and pick it away uh, to get about like 80, 80 or 85, 90% of it off. Um, so that's what I'm doing right here. I had to switch dental picks to a spoon dental pick. Uh, that seemed to work a little bit better. Uh, I have a bunch of different picks uh, and some will work better than others in different applications, but uh, already you can see it's quite a bit better, like a lot better. All Most of the sack is gone and I'll file that away or sand it away, the rest of it. And we're just gonna put him off to the side for now. My next door of business, as I noticed that the nib wasn't aligned properly uh, initially. So I didn't feel too bad pulling out the nib and feed um, and it, it wasn't too bad to get off. Uh, this isn't the best technique, um, but I just, it, it, it just eventually came off like that. Uh, and there's a better look at the, at the nib. Uh, again, it looks really terrible, but um, that's really going to be pretty easy to polish up. Like uh, semi-chrome polish will just wipe that away. Um, but before I do that, to get most of the, the main hard stuff on, uh, off there, I usually just uh, will throw it into my ultrasonic cleaner for just a few minutes just to see how much I can clean up off of it. And uh, you'll be surprised how quickly this removes a lot of a lot of the dried on ink, as you'll see in just a sec here. If you're looking at the bottom of the nib, the bottom third of the nib is already pretty clean. Uh, just in the first few seconds of of it being zapped, as like I, as I like to call it. While that's busy getting underway, um, I need to knock out the feed as it is stuck. I already put in a little bit of water just to kind of help loosen the ink a little bit, and uh, I'm just tapping it out right here. It took me just a couple of attempts, but uh, it was thankfully pretty easy to, to knock out. It was not uh, a major chore as uh, some other pens were. So I just have a watchsmith's hammer right here, which is does enough of the work. And once I got it out, uh, you know, it just simply comes out. You want to rather push the feed out rather than pulling it because uh, these uh, pushing it won't break it, uh, pulling it will. So that's why you always want to hit it from behind and usually knock it out as such. It's much easier that way. You can have a lot more control. Uh, and as a result, I'll also throw the feed into the ultrasonic cleaner. And uh, this is kind of fun to watch. Uh, all the ink kind of just vanish away from the the feed, and uh, I usually do do this do this with feeds because um, there's a lot of ink just crustated on the uh, 
on the feed in the first place. So it's it's good. Um, here I'm working on the nib, and uh, I'm using a little bit of semi-chrome polish and a Q-tip. Uh, this took uh, just a few minutes to to get uh, to get cleaned up to pretty much working order. You can already see it's just so much better. And um, yeah, believe it or not, that's the original nib. It's just a standard uh, ideal number two nibs. These are just fantastic nibs to write with. They got a little bit of flex with them, so. Um, yeah, they're just wonderful to write with. I love these nibs so much. Then here I am working on the section and the feed. And same process, just a little bit of semi-chrome polish really cleans up a lot of the dry it on ink. Uh, yeah, it does a fantastic job. I love semi-chrome polish. Um, I know some other people are uh, opposed to using semi-chrome polish, but um, it's... You know, I haven't found anything really negative with the stuff uh, in my 10 years of working with pens uh, this age. So I use it. It's it's a choice. Um, so I'm attacking the the plier marks here. Thankfully, they're not too deep in there. So uh, I'm not. My goal here is not to completely remove them. It's just to uh, to mitigate them rather, if you like. Uh, it's just to kind of make them a little bit less obvious so you don't feel them when you're writing with it. Um, I don't think there's a way I can make them go away completely. But uh, I'm just sanding it down gradually with 3200 grit and then I'm just working my way up the grit level to eventually 12,000 grit. And at the end, it actually turns out pretty well. It's, uh, it's, it's, it, you'll still be able to feel them. They're still there, but uh, it's not as it's not as obvious as you see here. And also removed a little bit of the oxidation, the uh, the browning color that you usually get with hard rubber pens when you uh, leave them out in sunlight or they're exposed to water. Uh, there's very many things that can discolor the pens. Uh, that that kind of helped remove a little bit of it. So now I'm going to go ahead and assemble the nib feed and section. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of finding the sweet spot in there by turning the nib and feed a little bit and um, to where it feels like it's snug where it just fits in there easily so you kind of have to you kind of have to figure it out on your own it's more of a feel thing and then once you get it situated you kind of just seat it in there as such uh, you also have the choice of heat setting it in there um, that's very common to do on these pens uh, you usually get a heat gun you heat up the, uh, the hard rubber and um, Try basically mold the uh, mold or form the the feed to the the bottom of the nib, um, but it, the the nib and feed kind of married together pretty well without me having to do that, so I just left it alone as is. So now we're going to go ahead and do the barrel and the cap, and these were the ones that had uh, a bit of discoloration and a bit of. Uh, bit of oxidation as you can see on the trim of the cl uh, the clip right here. So, so my first approach was um, to go ahead and just attack it with a sunshine cloth and see what that did. Uh, sunshine cloths are pretty easy on pens and it did a little bit of work, but uh, I resorted again to semi-chrome polish because it just works so well. Uh, at the end of the day, I mean, polish is all polish is polishing does is just remove uh surface layer stuff and as you can see it did, did such a much better job of it um i'm also going to show you um this is um, mark hoover's uh, black hard rubber uh, pen polish which i'm liking less and less because it's not as effective uh, as you can see right here here is the the hoovered version and then I also did a section right here of the semi-chrome version right here. Uh, you can see like a clear difference how uh, the semi-chrome polished one is a lot shinier so I just resort to using semi-chrome. I think it's it, I think it's okay to use uh, on occasionally like the first initial pass of it because it does remove a bunch of the, the, the surface layer stuff and yeah it does wear away like a microscopic layer of um, you know, the surface layer, but it's, to me, it's fine. I'd rather have my pens looking great as it is. And, you know, I don't usually go after 
the pen with some acrome polish more than once. So um, I'm pretty gentle with it, but it does a much better job. And uh, I, I, I'll continue to use it despite what others think. It's, it's my pens, so I, I like my pens looking nice. And Semichrome does a really good job of this, as you can see right here. There is a little bit of browning still to the, the pen. Um, maybe if I get more of Mark Hoover's deoxidation, that stuff is really good. Um, the deoxidizer, uh, that stuff is really good for that. Something I always like to do is um, chalk up my pens. Uh, I get a china marker and I like to uh, fill it, fill the uh, the words in with with china marker. I don't know, it's just an aesthetic choice. Uh, it's a choice I like to make. It makes uh, makes the lettering and the words and the the logos a little bit easier to read, the engraving, so to speak. So I like doing that. And as you can see, it's uh, it's not a hard process to do. Now we're going to go ahead and put on the ink sack. Uh, this is my third attempt, by the way, at doing this. I didn't think it was going to be too hard, but uh, the section and the barrel were a very uh, tight fit. So if you got a little bit of the shellac on the uh, the other side of the the section, then uh, it would be too tight and it won't go, and the uh, the section wouldn't go in all the way. So uh, this is my third attempt to, to be very careful about making sure that I didn't get any shellac on the other side of the grip section. And uh, that's why I was wiping away right now. So I'm wiping any, away any shellac. And I'm just making sure it's all fitting in there. I always like to align the nib and the lever up. And I was actually surprised I just got first try. <laughs> yeah, that was a miracle. That was like, wow, I didn't expect it to go on just like that. So... Uh, so there you go. There's the pen as it is. Um, it's looking really good as opposed to what it looked like before. And everything's working um, beautifully. It's uh, in much, much nicer shape than it was before. Yeah, there's a little bit still a little bit of oxidation you can see there, but I'm just going to leave that alone. And... What I'm going to do now is uh, I'm not going to talk. I'm just going to just let, allow myself to show you the measurements of the, or the the measurements of the pen, the dimensions of the pen. So that's the uh, the overall length. Here's the the thickness of the cap. Inside diameter of the cap. and the thickness of the cap itself. And the barrel length. Uh, I'll, I'll do these kind of lengths in the future. Uh, when I say barrel length, I always mean from the top of the barrel, or rather top of the grip section to the bottom of the, the barrel. Here's the two different types of clips uh, on the pens. Very subtle difference. I have two of these Waterman 52s, exactly the same. And here's the uh, the back of those pens. You can see there's, I mean, uh, they're pretty much identical. And even, even with the nibs, I mean, you see like subtle manufacturing differences here and there, which um, is negligible. Uh, you also notice like the nib on the right hand side, uh, you notice the shoulders on the nib are up a little bit higher than the one on the uh, left or the right and the left. Switch those around. <laughs> Here's my 0552. It's the same model except it's uh, gold overlay. So it's the same exact base of pen. And again, just a side by side comparison of the nibs as well. You notice a little bit of a difference in the grip section shape. The 0552 has a thicker uh, section, as you can see there. It's got a little bit more material, so it's not as brittle. And you also notice that the uh, the length of the 
the uh, levers is also a little bit different as well. And just to show you that actually, in fact, you can do this. You can put both caps on each pen. And then here's my 55 right next to it, just to show you like a little side-by-side -side comparison of the difference between these two uh, these two types of pens. They share the same uh, clip, by the way, uh, with the patent dates on the top. And uh, well, there you have it. There is another Waterman 52. Uh, it's a really gorgeous pen. It's one of the best pens that you can get. I mean, the, the, it's such an iconic pen uh, in the vintage era. Uh, it wrote well. It, it has a great amount of flex. The nibs on these things were amazing. Uh, it's not a show-offy pen. It's definitely not a, the most pretty pen in the world, but um, it's, it's very sleek. It's very uh, subtle, but uh, and it's very comfortable. It's not heavy at all. So uh, I really love this pen a lot, and I hope you enjoyed uh, this little video. So if you... If you like this video, uh, like to support me, go ahead and subscribe and uh, leave a like down below. And with that, I'll see you guys all next time.